Yo 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 I'm DJ Envy. And I go by the name of Charlemagne the God with the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. And currently we are on vacation. What? Man, totally disconnected. Yes. We're not even really here. You think you're listening to us, but we're not. Well, we are not. We're here in spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're on vacation. It is spring break. So we're playing uh, some of our best guest hosts of the year thus far. The best donkeys, the best interviews, you guys, which is the best callers, and some of the best moments the Breakfast Club has had in the last couple of months. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and have fun. Hey, and I just want to remind y'all, man, make sure to go get your tickets for the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival. It's happening Saturday, April 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia at Pullman Yards. If you've never been to a podcast festival, man, uh, you can come see some of your favorite podcasts live on stage, whether it's the 85 South Show, Horrible Decisions, Reasonably Shady, The Big Facts Podcast, just to name a few. It's hosted by me and my good sister, Jess Hilarious. Just go to eventbrite.com to get your tickets. That's eventbrite.com to get your tickets. Or go to blackeffect.com for more information, okay? The first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival happening Saturday, April 22nd in Atlanta. Go get your tickets now. Keep it locked. Red is going to be running the boards. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Ray, Ray, Ray. Yo, Charlamagne. Envy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now and he'll tell you what it is. We live? Hello? Yeah, what's up, Envy? What's up, Trav? Charlamagne. Trav, what's happening? My, what's up, <laughs> sis? Is, is this Nene there? Is this Nene Lee? Yes. Hi, how are you? Hey, Miss Nene. Miss Nene, you are... Iconic, baby. Oh, thank okay. you so much. Thank Legendary. You. Thank you. Stands across the board. Grand thank prize. You. <laughs> Give it to you. Yes, hit the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to call in. You know, I love you. I think you are one of the best readers out there. You be reading the girl. And I love <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank speaking, you. Of reader, speaking of reading the girls, Charlemagne. Yes, ma'am. Ooh. After further thought. It's your fault that we not that we not in a Super Bowl, okay? <laughs> Why is it my fault? Year. I like to hear this. Why is it your fault? It's Charlamagne's fault we not in a Super Bowl, and I'm stuck in Philadelphia again. Another oh, listening to them being in the Super Bowl because you was out here spreading stuff that we not going to the Super Bowl. Because and it's your fault. One, one thing about me, Travis, you know, I'm gonna always <laughs> deal with reality, and I'm gonna always be realistic. <laughs> You know, I cannot be emotionally connected and delusional to my Dallas Cowboys anymore. Trust me. I knew we weren't going to do nothing this year. And you were right. Yeah. Hello, who's this? It's Tyrone from uh, Slidell. Tyrone, what's up? Get it off your chest. I, man, people need to learn how to mind their business at work. I don't understand why you can't just mind your business, go to work, and come home. What right? you did? You done stole you done something? Done what right? you done did? You done work extra? What, what you done did <laughs> that somebody told on you, bro? You know, people... People be getting mad because you, what your hours you work and see you, you trying to just go home. You know, people just be all in your business. I just trying to get their trouble and stuff for no reason. I just told somebody who called in to mind their business. He <laughs> worried about who didn't, who not coming to work. Right, mind your business, Lord. We here to do one thing, and that's get this money and go home. Where you calling from? Where you calling from? Louisiana, nine eight five. Okay, okay. Salute to everybody in Louisiana. All right, brother. Yes, sir. Hello, who's this? This is D-Knight from Vauxhall, New Jersey. D-Knight or D-Knight D as in nighttime? D Knight. My name is D-Knight. All right, well, get it off your chest. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk about the students being up to teachers this morning. Yep. Um, I think it's a problem at home. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the early 90s of going to elementary school, and I caught the tail end of teachers having permission to punish the students. Yep. Really? And when you was home, your grandparents or your parents mm -hmm. would take the teacher's side no matter what. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you acted up in school, you was in trouble when you got home. Right. And now they start to teach these kids that, you know, they got their own voice and to protect their, their emotions and stuff like that. So, you know, I think it's going a little too far. You know what? It's only making like 40K. You, you made me think about something no now. 40K is a lot. My mom, The most my mom ever made in uh, South Carolina was 30000 a year. But you made mm -hmm. me think about something. Mm -hmm. She beating up on an adult at home. 
Because for her to go out in the real world and think she yeah. can try an adult, she done won at home at least once or twice. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> ain't no ain't no probably. adult ever beat her ass in the house. That's, that's probably, what it is. You know, that's probably. probably true. But I, I would say this, like he said, you know, I was at the tail end of, of uh, Miss Butterfield out in Queens, Caribbean teacher who would grab my cheeks and twist my cheeks if I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that's abuse. I mean, a or, lot of those teachers did used to abuse us. I had a teacher named Miss. <laughs> Up. Yeah. F us up in fourth grade. She ain't never put her hands on me. Mm -hmm. But boy, I used to see her drag some kids <laughs> around that classroom. Now, shout out to Miss Butterfield. Miss Butterfield, me and her son was good. But she would grab you, grab your cheek if you wasn't paying attention. But it kept the students in line. Mm -hmm. She grabbed your cheek. Now she's going to get a whole handful of ink because all that Beijing Yo, you got up, in that damn bit. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. From but these cops look like us. These cops were, you know, three of them were cues. Like, like they were us. You know what I mean? Hello, who's this? Hello, Breakfast Club. This is Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Good morning. Get it off your chest. Um, I was just calling. Um, first of all, good morning. Um, maybe, hey. hey, good morning. Um, I was just calling to um, wish myself happy 50th birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. That is a blessing. <laughs> Big Tanya. five oh. It's your birthday. What you doing for your birthday, mama? Um, I'm about to go to work. Um, I wanted to plan a big birthday party, but my mm. mom passed away last year. Oh, Aww. sorry to hear that, Queen. Yeah. yeah. What state yeah. you in? So, South Carolina. Okay, you hey. know what? What's your cash app? <laughs> Charlemagne and I put a little something in your cash app for your birthday dinner tonight. Nice. <laughs> What? All right, you sit there and cry. You better sit in that cash app. What's your cash app, Mama? We're gonna we gonna put a little little something in your thing for your fiftieth. Okay, my cash app is um dollar sign Sumter Finance S U M T E R Finance. Okay. Okay. And then my Venmo is at Sumter Finance. Okay. And then my Cash App is Sumter Finance. S U M T C E R S. All right, I'm gonna send you fifty cents. You better not send it no fifty cent. It's your fiftieth birthday. I'm gonna send you fifty cents. All right, I just I just sent you something to your cash app. Nice. I hope y'all send me something to mine. Nina, you and caked I, I up. You, I, <laughs> I don't see something's finest. I got it right here. Tanya Sumter. S-U-M-P-T-E-R-S finest. F-I-N-E-S-T. Tanya Sumter. She got the gray, the gray braids. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm, all right, Mama. Have a good night. Salute right? everybody in something, man. Okay, mine's is dollar sign L-I. That ain't your birthday, <laughs> Nina. <laughs> Let me hear it. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now we have Nene Leakes joining us. She's our guest host. Wait, all right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. So the question is 800-585-1051. Should you accept a gift from somebody that you're not interested in? Now, this comes from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, let's, let's hear it. You're giving me a Rolex. Does that mean something? What do you think it means? Oh, Oh, a Rolex is timeless. Yeah, but I if think... If you let it, and you rewind it, and you work it, it can last forever. Okay. Yeah. Whatever that means. It's getting weird. But I still need to get this watch. Bling, bling, bling. <laughs> Bitches, it's mad. So, so Nene, is, is yeah. this something that you don't mind doing? If somebody gives you a gift, you like, hey, I'm keeping it. Uh, Yeah. No, not really. No, I don't think you should accept <laughs> gifts. No, seriously, I don't think you should accept gifts from everyone that mm -hmm. you're not interested in. Okay, some guys. Look, I know he was a nice guy. I know he wouldn't do anything to me crazy. So, and I wanted the gift. But <laughs> I wanted the gift. But don't you think if somebody gives you something like a Rolex, right? Yeah. That that's ten thousand dollars. Yeah. He's not giving it to you because he thinks you're cool. You know, he yes, probably he wants to date you. Or, yeah. But he know, thinks I'm cool. That's why he wants to date me. But I don't want to date him, but I just want the gift. But he might think that that's like a lead-in, like, oh, she's accepting it my gift. It is a lead-in, and I am misleading him. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't have a problem with it as long as you don't mislead him. You know what I'm saying? You got to let that person know this don't mean nothing. I don't owe you anything because you gave me this watch. Don't think because you gave me this mm. gift, I'm going to give you some ass. I that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I that's understood, that. I don't have a problem with you taking the gift. Yeah. You know what I mean? But even if you do say that, he still thinks this is a chance because of you're accepting the gift. I mean, of yeah, course. but if you making it clear, like, just because you gave me this gift, that don't mean I'm giving you some of this poom poom. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, you also ask for other things. You know, just because you gave me this, this is not enough. I'd like to have a car and shoes and bags and, <laughs> and then I'll think about it. So think about what, the date? <laughs> think about uh, maybe you'll go on a date after all that. No, I'll go on the date, but sleeping with him, yeah, we need to get some other stuff. Oh my goodness. What's the number to sleep with, with somebody, Nene? Like, no, it just depends. Like, he needed to do a lot because I wasn't attracted to him. 
Oh, oh now so, see, this is yeah. a good. So question. the gifts make them look a little sexier. Yeah. So you, so okay, let's say, okay, so you, you said you attracted the little baby. Right? And the game. I like little baby. I said I was attracted okay, to so him. Who, I like him. Are you attracted to the game? One of them, you said you. No, was I like him too. Nah, I'm not attracted to. Who him, are you I like attracted him. to, me? Uh, Yanni Steele. That's your fiance or something? I don't know. No, that's my boyfriend. That's your boyfriend. Your boyfriend. Okay, yeah. so you were attracted to him. How much did he have to buy? Before he got not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A dinner, a vacation? No, but he gave gifts too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Is that the smooth brother in the corner with the accent? Yes. Smooth brother with the accent? Oh my god! I thought I heard him have an accent. He does have an accent. Now he's, he's talking from low Africa. before because no, he, he got an accent. He has an accent. Yeah, I know. Ain't crazy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay, okay. 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 Yeah, that brother's smooth. That brother got leather pants on at 6 in the morning. He ain't, <laughs> he ain't playing. When I saw him walk in this morning, leather pants on 6 in the morning. I said, oh, okay. This is a smooth operator right here. Yeah, but, you know, even Yanni, he had to do the same things. You know, dates. You know, he bought gifts, too. But he ain't, he ain't, he ain't come out with the, with the Rolex from the door, though. Yanni, come here, brother. You feel like, no, I just want to know the first. Just tell me, what's the first gift you bought with them nice teeth you got over there? What's the first gift you, you bought, better, Yanni? You better watch out. He told about your man pants and his teeth. You better watch out for Charlamagne now. He said he don't even remember he bought so many gifts. He God did. damn it. But well, let's go to hey, the full Hey, I, Lala was up here last week, and Lala said you got to get you an African man because them African men spend that bag. Remember she said that she last did say week? That. She did African say that. African guys, you know, I would say they do take care of their lady, but, yeah. you know, one and done for me. Like, I, you know, if something happened with us, I would never date another African. Wow. Damn it, man. Mm. What part of Africa are you from, brother? Liberia. Liberia. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Denise from Kingsland, Georgia. All right, Denise, hey. talk to us. You taking gifts from people hey. you're not interested in? Heck yeah. I take the Rolex, oh boy. the Chanel boots, the oh Chanel boy. purse, and wait okay. for someone to come through the <laughs> Now, do you let them know that this don't mean nothing just because you bought me this? I'm not going to give you no ass? Yeah, after I get the gifts, of course. Come on now, I'm a wife. Lord have mercy. So, so, so is there a certain price that the person has to hit? And then you'd be like, all right, now it's time to give him some. Nah, none. Boy, Especially that's if crazy. I'm not interested. I just want the gifts. Well, y'all is crazy. Inflation is at an all-time high out here. What is up with your interest rates are high? Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Tasha. Hey, Tasha. Good morning. Good morning. You accepting gifts for somebody? Actually, I told them I couldn't accept it. I was dating this guy. There you and go. He liked me a lot more than I liked him, and I, he got me an Apple Watch. And I told Girl, him, I please knock it off. No, yeah. no, what's yeah. bad? What's yeah. bad? That's good. Rolexes no, and I'm Birkin bags. No. And yeah, you can turn out an Apple Watch. So, no, 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 hold on, I'm talking about something. So, wait, hold on. Good, good job, Tasha. Nini, Nini, you get off with an Apple Watch. Oh my God, I would definitely give it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what am I doing with this Apple Watch? I don't even. Know. I'm not even taking. Mind yeah. you, I got on the Apple Watch right now. And I'm never talking to him again. Either. Damn it, man. <laughs> Jesus. No. Some people, you got to stay in your ways, though. You got to stay in your ways, though. Some people got to get the Rolex. You got to get it, but God damn. Yeah, that's true, but not an Apple Watch. Goodness gracious. 800. Girl, do you think I am? Right. Give me a Timex, then. I mean, yeah. 800-585-1051. Should you accept Apple gifts from someone you're not interested in? Call us now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. NeNe Leaks is here, our guest host. And just just to put it out there, she's not accepting your uh, Apple Watch. No, out Nini there. had a little change of heart. What you saying, Nini? I will accept the Apple Watch if he's giving it to me and said, "Here, I'm just giving this to you to keep up with your step." Gotcha. <laughs> you know, you working out or something? That what makes about a if, lot of sense. What about if it's like a Michael Kors bag? Somebody like here's a Michael Kors. A uh, Michael Kors. All right, never mind. You get that to your little teenage daughter, not to no one woman. Michael Kors bag. All right. Should you accept gifts from someone you're not interested in? It comes from uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, of course. You giving me a Rolex? Does that mean something? What do you think it means? Oh. Oh, a Rolex is timeless. Yeah, but I if said. If you let it and you rewind it and you work it, it can last forever. Okay. Yeah. Whatever that means. It's getting weird. But I still need to get this watch. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches, it's mad. And we're asking, you know, 
What would you do? Hello, who's this? This is Tanisha from Mississippi. How are y'all? Hey, hey Tanisha. Tanisha. How are you? Should you accept gifts from someone I, that you're not interested in? <laughs> so, if, as long as they know that you're not interested, I don't see a problem with it. I agree. As long as you put, as long as that, as you let them know, like, look, just because you give me X, Y, and Z, don't mean I'm giving you some of this good, good. I think there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Charlemagne is so funny to me. Oh my God, some of this good, good. You know, you're from the country. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, who's this? Hey, yo, it's Dante from Atlanta. What's going on, Dante? Hey. What's up, bro? Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. First thing before we get to the to the topic, I just want to thank you and Charlemagne. For all y'all do, man. Y'all keep me rolling every day through the morning. Appreciate you, Appreciate kid. you, bro. <laughs> so talk to me. Yes, sir. I, I feel like it's unnecessary for you to accept a gift because it, it creates unnecessary emotions, like feelings that wasn't even there. So if you give a gift, you think that's you, you smashing, that's your girl now? Nah, not necessarily. It depends on the gift. A Rolex. Yeah, if I give her a Rolex, yeah, that's my girl. I'm smashing. <laughs> no, see, that's a, you can't have that entitled, you know, uh, that entitlement. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, because you know, they always say it ain't tricking if she's worth it, right? Like if she's if she's Rolex worthy, you give her a Rolex. You know, it's like you you, you do it and hope for the best. Hello, who's this? <laughs> hope for the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Now Absolutely. She- Absolutely what, yeah, yeah. You ain't even what, what, absolutely what. You just ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I'm taking the gifts. Let me tell you something. I was listening to respond. Okay, absolutely, you should accept that a gift. A yes. gift is given willingly. Uh huh. So, you, you don't lay no stipulations okay. down. We ain't sleeping together. No. So if somebody gives you a Rolex that you're not interested in. You taking that Rolex and you out. Absolutely, because you want to know something. They decided to give it to me. I didn't ask for it. Nene, do you lay any stipulations down? Do you let them know like ain't ain't happening now just because you gave me a gift? No, I'd be like, we going to dinner. Which restaurant would you like to eat at? You know, we we'll okay. go to dinner tonight. We can talk and yeah, but that's it. I mean, you know, I didn't do Yanni like that though. Hello, you didn't do. Y- <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. What's your name? Devin. Devin, what's your thoughts, Devin? Are you accepting gifts for somebody you're not interested in? I am not, and I love you, Nene. Me and my husband adore you, but I think it is so wrong to accept a gift from somebody you have no interest with. I think it misleads them. I think yeah. it it gives them the wrong message, and mm-hmm. it, I think that's part of like part of why like stalkers happen. Like it can just open up so many different cans of worms. Yeah, I understand, but I actually did in the end date this guy for a little while. I don't know if you guys oh, remember. Okay. Yeah. Was that a sorry date? Like, I have to do it because he gave me? Or... No, he was giving me so much. I, yeah, <laughs> Who was the guy? We saw this play out on TV. Who was the yeah, guy? I did have to. I just felt like I needed to date him. He was so good to me. Mm-hmm. Who was it? You don't want to shout him out. I don't need to shout People him out. the show. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So he was but, so good to you. He gave mm-hmm. you gifts. So why mm-hmm. didn't it work? It just didn't work. He's We still are friends today. He's a very nice guy. But um, I'm honestly, I am just wasn't attracted to him. Gotcha. Little TV? Okay, don't do that. <laughs> you said yeah. You said yeah, Nene. I heard that. No, you know you're from the country. <laughs> Little pee pee. <laughs> Jesus. You know what I think, too? What's that? I think some of these women haven't received the right gift. Mm-hmm. The only person I heard they give the gift back was the person who received the Apple Watch. Everybody getting yeah. these Rolexes and these big boy gifts, these big girl gifts, they ain't yeah. giving them back. Mm-mm. Well, what's the moral of the story? I think the moral of the story is as long as you let people know what it is. You know yeah, what I mean? I think the moral of the story is you have to use good judgment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I knew that he wasn't a bad person. I mm-hmm. knew he wouldn't hurt me or anything like that. But you can't accept everybody's gifts. All right. Did anybody yeah. ever ask for anything back? Who is everybody or anybody? Well, anyone, the, the... No, you can't get these gifts back. <laughs> they, they're not going back. <laughs> what are we going to do? But you won't be getting them back. Okay? I, I, I respect that. I tell women all the time, you can't un, you can't un-F them. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You sure can. <laughs> so if you can't un-F them, don't give the gift back. I'm not giving back anything. <laughs> My goodness. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Show Celebrity Prank Wars has host Kevin Hart and Nick Cannon declaring war on Hollywood. Each week they take you behind the schemes as they team up with their famous friends for a high stakes annex, outrageous stunts, and sweet revenge. The bigger the star, the harder they fall. Catch Celebrity Prank Wars tonight at 10 on E. And those bridges, and you gotta come back on that bridge because everything that go up come down. Mm-hmm. And so I just humble myself, man. I I, I definitely 
feel the pain of all the OGs that have kids. I've been through a lot this year, bro. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in hip hop, the kids are turning on you. Everything you got to deal with. And I get out and fight and work for my kids. And I, I look at, and I ain't going to say no names because people always change stuff around. But everybody's going through something, whether it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everything I've been in life, I've been shot at, almost killed. I grew up in the projects. I made it out. I put the work in. And then, you know, we talk about now 50 years of hip hop. But look how we're crumbling because we don't value each other. And so anybody give you an opportunity, you should be able to value that and be thankful. Anybody ever gave me an opportunity. I know Emmy, when you came on, I know it was like a joke and everybody said, like what I was saying, Charlamagne, it's not that many opportunities out here. Mm -hmm. Shout out to 50 Cent, what he doing in the TV game. But mm -hmm. when somebody come on a set, it's not from him. You know, your check is not going to get cut from that person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in the business. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. um, when you look at uh, George Lucas, uh, Star Wars, those checks don't come from him. But our culture just, mm -hmm. we just throw the blame at each other. And I was just curious because, I'm going to tell you something. The young lady that was on here, I love her. I like her. Like, she's funny to me. Like, I, that's, I wouldn't have put her into the movie if I didn't feel like that. So, uh, even... Other guy from DC, I wouldn't have put him his music out. He's talented. I wouldn't have put him. I I, I could honestly admit if I think you're talented, but the world got to realize that everything don't sell. Mm -hmm. When you validate something, say a person was in jail, that's how, and they seen their music in jail because that come like, come on, bro, how far are we going? Like we got to grow. That's why I said we we more of into entertaining than educating. Well, you think the misunderstanding is is coming coming, Pete? Like, well, I when, think. Well, just for me, man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been through a lot. Like I said, I lost my daughter. Condolences, like, condolences, and, condolences, and it's like, man, I ain't really got time for this. But I, I wanted to come up here to educate because I'm not gonna go against these people because I love them. This is, mm -hmm. this is, this is what I was once was. But I have that much respect to. If I have a problem, I'm gonna call you, try to figure mm -hmm. it out. Or if somebody ain't been around you ten years, or this stuff, this other thing happened six years ago. I'm saying, why are we arguing and fussing about that? Other cultures are not doing it, right? They're not putting each other down. They'll communicate. No, they that's the past. We can't change the past. We can change the future. But we can be thankful uh, somebody gave me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You guys got an opportunity on here. So if I pay somebody 15 grand for three, four hours or five, whatever mm -hmm. it was, right? If I came up here and host on this show with you, how much would you pay them? The, ho the host on the show? Yeah, I mean, the co co-host that are on here. But we don't, oh, we don't, we don't yeah, pay nothing. anybody. Yeah, I mean, if they're coming in just to, for a couple of days. Okay, so somebody could come here for a couple of days and make no money, but I could give somebody 15000 for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And now I got to go through this, that I gave them opportunity. Think about it. Everything that I try to give people opportunities for, it come back to bite me. And I'm saying, why? I think the devil is busy. Mm -hmm. You know why the devil mm -hmm. busy? Because we're doing bigger things now. It's not. I'm not in the music business. I love my people. I'm not, like, think about it, Charlotte, man. Everything that I done done. Why I didn't go viral? Like, I'm talking about pie. I've been in the community over 24 years. I'm going to show son, you something your, right now. Your son going to an HBCU? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. None of this stuff. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to start right now. You're talking about product. I put out, it's a Brill book that I did with a seven-year-old kid that's blind now that got shot mm -hmm. in Louisville. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody talked about that. That can't, like, whoever did this? Nobody. Adventures with Malachi. Mm -hmm. Adventures with Malachi. Look Teamwork at that. That's a real book. Yeah, I never seen it. ABC book. Mm -hmm. What I sell for the kids. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. this go back for, for a wonderful cause. I done buried so many kids in that city. Even in Washington, D.C. So I'm going to go out in Washington, D.C. I got a school that I'm with with other black men. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board. And, and it's called Richard Wright. Why none of these kids coming out here and working with us, helping us keep this going? I'm, I'm not from D.C., but the people in D.C. know the time that I put in there. So I'm going to show y'all this. And this, this is a gift for you. Proverbs, y'all see that? 24, mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. A righteous man falls seven times, and then he he arrives. He arrives from falling, he get back up. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how many times I done fell down, I get back up. And I think people don't like that because they want me to stay where I used to be at. I'm not. I'm not a quitter. I get up and work hard, do what I got to do. And that's why God keep blessing me. You think all of this is just a, some miscommunication? Though? Yes, I really do. And, I, and well, for people that don't know, let's let's say Master P is here. 
uh, last week, Jess Hilarious was co-hosting with us, and there was a story about Master P and, and Fatrell. 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 Mm-hmm. So, you know, Jess claimed that, you know, during taping of I Got the Hookup 2, mm-hmm. she got a, a front end of a check and never received the back end, and she stated that. So what was the communication? And Master P said, you know, I don't pay. Uh, miscommunication. Master P said, I don't pay people. It's a production company. It's my movie, but it's. Yeah, but why is we talking about that? Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. I gave you opportunity. Why is we talking about that to bring? I'm not even in the music business no more. I'm not in the entertainment business. That's what I'm saying. So you take that and turn it into clicks. And, uh, and even when she read it, I wasn't addressing that when I said people hide behind these computers and blo- that wasn't that wasn't about mm-hmm. her. That's mm-hmm. what I'm telling y'all. It's all the miscommunication. What she read was not about her. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Let's let's change this, man. Let's change our thoughts and our patterns and say. How can we help each other? I'm doing something bigger, man. I'm, I used to be in the streets. I changed my life. My life is about building God's kingdom now. I'm about building God's kingdom. And I know the devil gonna, don't like that. Like, okay, going to throw my own people. That's why I say this, us against us. We have to change that, but we got to stop allowing all these bloggers and gossipers to start putting stuff out there and making the news. I'm just saying, even if she said that, nobody checked it or verified, but that was news. The mm-hmm. same thing what you did, Envy, when you said that, you hit the news to go viral for what? Oh, you mean Irv got it? Yeah. Oh, the reason I said it because, you know, during that time I was broke. And yeah, that, you and that, you and was that, triggered by the same right, kind of and, conversation. And that, and that money meant everything to me. Now, it doesn't bother me. Now, I don't need the money from Irv, and I speak to Irv all the time, but it bothered me because during that time I was an up-and-coming producer. That was my first beat soul, and I didn't know the game. So Irv bought the beat. I never got a back end. He put it in so, a movie. I never got a money from it. But that bothered me because I'm like, damn, that money would have helped. Yeah, and that's that, but now I'm, I'm past it. You yeah, know, I speak to but, Irv. But I, I speak to them. But I'm saying, though, for that, it, it triggers something to where the world don't really know. That was a long time ago. It was mm-hmm. like this was yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Even mm-hmm. all the stuff that people talked about me, that was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, mine was 20 years ago. Yes. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it made it like it's new. But I'm saying we don't need that with each other because they don't do They could stand on each cone to do all these different things. Even if they have a problem with each other, they could communicate that with each mm-hmm. other. I just think we have to stop that. We are killing us with the media. I have a school in St. Louis mm-hmm. called Urban Born with Janelle, which... We help keep kids off the street. It's an after-school program. Mm-hmm. We started in L.A. where Nipsey Hussle was one of the first kids in our school in the eighth grade. So look how far we I've been doing this for over 24 years. Nobody talk about that. That's mm-hmm. the only thing I'm saying. So if, if you stop me from doing what I'm doing, who are going to help these kids? I'm in New Orleans, been there for over 20-something years. In uh, Memphis, been there for over 20 years. In California, mm-hmm. Louisville. You know, I'm bearing kids, paying for it. So I don't, I don't, I don't measure wealth by what you have. I measure by what you give. Mm-hmm. And so I want our culture and our people to understand that. Why is we destroying each other? Now I get what you're saying, Pete, but I also look at it like this, right? And we talk about all your positive. You know, you're always invited up here. But if somebody owes me money, r- whether it's 20 years or 10 years, and it's a misunderstanding, yeah. I feel a conversation should be had. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I don't not think the fact that it's malicious. Yeah, not the fact yeah. that it's 20 years ago. It don't matter for me. Thank God I was blessed enough where it doesn't matter I, now. Yeah, but, but I'm saying that was your situation. But I'm just saying we in the production thing, right? Mm-hmm. We don't pay for the. The, yeah, the, talent. the talent, right? Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. And that's, so, not, that's why I was asking. So, just was there a misunderstanding with an agent, a produ- the production company, a man? Well, it don't matter because I think people take it out of context because of what's said instead of looking at mm-hmm. you know. And I, I hope one day I could get with her and say because I'm really, I really don't want to be in the entertainment business ever again. I'm good. So if my kids want to do it, they got to do it on their own. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I want to, I want to be in a product business. To be honest yeah. with you, because once you grow up. And we got, we got to show this culture how to live. And that's what I want to do. I mean, they got, some, you know, you got, even I'm just telling y'all, comedians destroying our, the people that's going to do for what you got to do for the community and the culture. So with us gone, who going to help? But you know, to P2, when people get in front of these microphones, we volunteer information. Like you was talking about Meek Mill the other day. Yeah. And you know how, I guess you kept Meek Mill. You wanted, you didn't want Meek Mill to sign with MMG. Yeah. And then Meek Mill retweeted it and was like, this is a lie. Okay. Let's, let's talk, let's talk yeah. about that when we no. come back. We'll talk about it when we come back. <laughs> Master P is here. 800 585 1051. We got more with P. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Please, DJ, Envy, Charlemagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Master P is here. He just pulled up on us this morning. So, the poor minds, the ladies of poor minds, we, we just, we put him in the green room for a second. You gotta let the OG speak. You gotta let you know the OG I mean? speak. So, you asked the question right before we went to break. Yeah, because, you know, everybody gets in front of these microphones and they volunteer information. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I never knew you managed, you know. So, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna say, tell you guys about that situation. So, mm-hmm. I had an opportunity 
to manage Meek Mills. So first, uh, I don't know if you know Charlie Mack. That was oh, his absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. And so Charlie Mack had him, and then, you know, he Meek wanted to go a different direction, but Charlie Mack had him under contract. James called Charlie Mack. Then I called Charlie Mack. I said, man, this this guy is a star. Let him go do, you know, Charlie Mack was with Will Smith. And so what happened was, it's my attorney, Rick, but I want to clear that up to where I had an opportunity. Me and James signed a management contract, but I knew that Meek was going to be a boss at the beginning. He had that song called I'm a Boss, mm-hmm. and he just was a talented guy. Mm-hmm. But my attorney, Rick, did all the stuff for, for Meek, and me and James signed a management contract, and then I ended up moving on because I thought that Meek should be on his own, which, you know, he's a boss, and it all worked out. But when I talked about that, it was talking about failure. Mm-hmm. How like you could feel and move on and go and do do something else and be successful. So a lot of people think that we just successful right off the top. Well, this was all about showing people how you could feel. Go and give you a second chance and move on. Other than that, I mean, I I I got number love and respect for for, for me. Because he reposted it and put this is a lie, and but there's no context to that. So of course, blogs gonna run with that. Yeah, they don't. You know what I mean? They they, mm-hmm. they didn't get it, but that's that's the truth. Mm-hmm. So I had an opportunity. I walked away from it because I figured like. He's the truth, mm-hmm. which he turned out to be. Mm-hmm. So now, another thing that you know was was something I didn't like. Me and Charlemagne didn't like because Charlemagne has four four daughters. I have six kids. Yeah. You and your son got yeah. into a public thing online, which was yeah. really bothersome because, like I tell everybody, no matter what, that's family business, and a lot of time yeah. family business take time to, to straighten uh-huh. family business out. Mm-hmm. So you and Romeo, y'all y'all good? It seems like now. So so this is what I want to tell y'all, man. All y'all have kids, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't wish this on nobody. Mm-hmm. I love my son, but you know the world and change now. You ain't never said heard me say nothing about it. I just like like any other father. You 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 hurt by it, you don't understand it. You like mm-hmm. what's going on? Because everybody try to tell us all how to heal. You you're not gonna understand my pain because you know you could say Romeo lost his sister. I sure. lost a daughter. Mm-hmm. So it's different type of pain. That's why I'm saying that that could make somebody snap. And so at, at this time in my life, man, I'm just thankful. I'm moving. So I'm doing positive things. I wanted to get out. You know, because some people think I should be a certain way. Mm-hmm. I can't sit at home. So I get out here and, and I just want to thank the people that's been with me, that's a part of this with the You Are Not Alone Foundation. I'm telling you, like, even we talk about us, I got one person in hip hop that came to me and said, let's do a tour. That was Post Malone. Like, let's do a concert, a You're Not Alone concert to help and give back because this is serious. And so no, nobody looked like us. And so shout out to Post Malone and his uh, manager, Drake. Man, I appreciate y'all. Like, we're going to do things because this is real. Drugs is killing our culture and our kids mm-hmm. and also mental illness. That's right. And so, like, a lot of people are going through that. You think just because you got money or, or you or you successful that, that your kids are immune to this. Like, nobody's immune mm-hmm. from pain. None of us, because my brother died at 19. I got another brother in prison. You know what I'm saying? And my parents, my grandparents, my grandparents, and they took us to church every t- every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, every Sunday. So you're not immune from pain, debt, none of that. I just think that it's 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 tough, man, for a family. Hey, but are y'all good now, though? Because cause yeah. y'all are so, I mean, the world knows y'all, like, y'all were best friends. You know what I mean? See, Last but you know that, but think about it. Look how the media turned that. And Charlemagne, though, I mean, mm-hmm. we came up here to Charlemagne to talk about why Romeo wanted to get off of growing up hip-hop. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, and then... Well, y'all people gave get, each other your flowers when y'all was up here. Like, yeah, y'all took that opportunity. Yeah, which so, was great. So, so think about it. That's what we got to realize, man. Nobody's promised. So you got to appreciate every day. It's a blessing. So when your family and walk out that door, man, I'm like, for me, I, as a parent, I get it. My kids are not going to understand everything I do. Uh, or somebody else could get in somebody's ear and tell mm-hmm. them that, oh, you need to do this or you deserve. I don't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. All I can do is keep growing as a man and keep loving my kids. But the ones that are old, I got to let them go and do what they got to do. Make their mistakes, feel, get over it like, like, mm-hmm. like I did. Mm-hmm. And so, but my younger kids, I think it's different because... I just taught them hard work. Mm-hmm. And so you got to imagine as a parent, I feel accountable for whatever happens with my kids because you know, okay, growing up, you wanted to give your kids everything if you're successful. And I think that's what's happened with a lot of these hip hop parents. Mm-hmm. So we have to change that and just teach our kids hard work like other cultures do. And so that's the, that's the changes that I'm in. Like I'm, I'm working on myself. I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm growing as a parent. And that's why I really got out of the, the entertainment side of this and say, let me focus more on the product side. Do you hate the entertainment side? No, I don't hate it. I, I thank God for it, but I still have to grow up. I want to show people in this culture how we can grow up and don't don't be afraid to see us 
where we at. Don't be afraid to get older, Charlemagne. You know, I mean, you growing up in this. You growing, right. you you said you you wasn't talking the way you talk now. Absolutely. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, you're not talking the way you used to talk. No. So why why people can't allow us to grow up mm -hmm. and get better? Because we're stronger together, mm -hmm. and that's how that's how I feel about this. Like we're we're gonna keep running. I think that's what make me and Snoop relationship so good, because we realize that our lives are not perfect, but we gotta keep going. We got my my whole strength is just man. Don't worry about it. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to be the boss of everything. So I'm gonna show you the product I got with Snoop, because you know. Mm -hmm. you, you think sometimes too that uh, people get disgruntled when things don't work out the way they want it to work out? Well, I'm gonna tell y'all. So many things didn't work out for me. Mm -hmm. I failed so many times, but I didn't hold my head down. Mm -hmm. So I want people to know. When people say, "Oh, they with no limit," they so all these struggling. I think that's what people come around me at. They they want what I did twenty years ago, mm -hmm. but that was twenty years ago. How long do a music career last? Yeah, not long at all. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, so think about it. When you mm -hmm. pull up some of these things on iTunes, everybody got products on iTunes, but that don't mean it's selling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can invest in something. So that's what I'm saying. I think we just got to be able to communicate. That's why I said today is going to be a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. Let's educate the culture how this stuff works. Because people see you on TV, they think you're making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But that ain't the truth. A lot of these people not make unless you're at the top of the game. But the people at the bottom is not making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. People in the music industry right now is not making millions of dollars. The ones at the top are. Mm -hmm. But you pull up, I hear you guys talk about it all the time, the people that... That are not making money That's superstars That's right mm -hmm. Their records are not selling That's superstars But this is the problem That I have That we gotta change We don't go at The other cultures The way we go at Our culture If we have a problem Because I, I think what it is We sit down and eat And hang with people Yeah you break bread with them So if you, if, if you look somebody In the eye And you have a conversation With them In their mind Master P is the person Behind yeah. all of this Master P is yeah. the person Cutting me to check the Even record. family yeah, Think yeah, about yeah, it yeah. Family when you're not Where you want to be at You tell a family member No one time They mad with you They never want to talk to you They gonna, they yeah. gonna put you up They gonna blast you And all this stuff So I'm saying Well guess what Won't y'all go Do your own thing then If you don't like the boss Go be the boss That's what I did mm -hmm. And everybody can't be the boss mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying That's why Snoop is so successful To where he took what he learned what I showed him And took it to another level mm -hmm. And that's cool mm -hmm. And that's how we come together So I want to show y'all mm -hmm. In June And even with Snoop he, Snoop has complained About not getting paid From that, certain individuals You know yeah. what I mean From Death Row Whoever mm -hmm. else The publishing Stuff like that Yeah but so he that's, kept, a, that's, a, that's a common thing For people to do Yeah people are gonna do that But guess what Snoop now He went and brought the company Yeah bought mm -hmm. Death Row You yeah, see Death what I'm Row. saying yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we have Snoop Loop So this is bigger than Sugar. I know a lot of people when we started, it was Snoop Loops, right? Mm -hmm. Look how we feel. People was like, oh, Snoop Loops. They're going to they gonna make y'all take it off the shelf. And they did, right? We came back. We went and changed the name to Snoop Serial. That's your second time in the series. I remember Hootie Hoo. Yep. I remember See, I Hootie feel Hootie. so many times, but that's what it takes. So now y'all don't realize I lost millions. Damn. I lost millions. So, and then I, I but I figured the game out. Mm -hmm. Broder's Food, which is Snoop. Calvin Broder's. Calvin yeah. Broder's. Mm -hmm. So think about it. When you got... When you got uh, catalogs, you got all these different companies, those are family brands. That's what we taught each other, how to build our own family brand. Mm -hmm. And so Snoop is the founder of this. I'm the CEO of the company. Mm -hmm. And so everybody got a job and a role. That's why I get out here and promote this. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. We feeding families with this. This is not just about us. Mm -hmm. we, we take we tackling homelessness. The more we make, the more we give, so. All right, we got more with Master P. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Master P. Now, don't worry. Our Dre and Lex P from the Poor Minds podcast are here. They're just on, in the green room right now, and we're still kicking it with Master P. I wanted to clear something up, too, because yeah. I don't want people to take it the wrong way. Now, when, when you were telling uh, Meek Mill not to sign with Ross, it wasn't because Ross was bad. You were just no. saying he's big enough to be independent. He could have did it on his own. No, the thing about it, that song, I'm a boss. Go back. See, see, when time passed, that song was already big. Right. Yeah. Then Ross got on the record. So that's the only thing I was saying. Then Ross tell tell y'all himself that he, he his 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 business wasn't straight. Now he got it together. And look where he at now. Gotcha. So that's why I was saying about Phil. You man, I love these guys. I mean, I want them. I want I want I want y'all to be able to learn from all our mistakes. Right. So that's basically what it's about. And I think the internet will take it and run with it, mm -hmm. and that's how we destroying each other. So that's why I say I'm going to focus on products. Got so, you. Like, so that's the that's the. I, and I got one last question. Okay. That that I thought was kind of kind of crazy. Well, so uh, I, I, your brother mm -hmm. was saying that uh, he was trying to get Hove on the record. Silk the Shine uh -huh. was trying to get Jay Z, and he said Jay Z declined a hundred thousand dollars. Was that true? You know what? I mean, that was Silk Project. Okay. So, All right. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't. That that was so long ago. Mm -hmm. Like. 
that was that was my brother project. That's right. what I'm saying. So I I want I don't want people to turn this yeah. into gotcha. You know. So there you go. So how would you tell people like Trell, even Jess, how how should they handle these situations if they I, feel I, like they owe something? Reach out, communicate with the people. Right, right, right. That's it. But I'm just saying though, like don't just jump off when I, like if I was in the music, even Romeo, even Romeo, yeah. even my own son. Yeah. And so I mean, this is a big part of all this, but it's mm -hmm. like okay, that's fine. But that, I'm keep telling y'all, that's what the devil do. The devil want to destroy the people that's gonna get. I, I, like my whole life, if you go look at it, has been about. Helping. I ain't say I've been perfect. You no, know, my life ain't been perfect. I had to move on and change and grow. I'm trying to show people we can grow, and that's what I'm doing right now. Now, last thing, P, tell yeah. us all the things you own and we can get because P, you always got something new. We ain't bring no sneakers today, P. Oh, you know what? I got so many sneakers. Go to Minyadi.com. You got them on right now. I got, man, you know, come on. I'm, I'm gonna stay shiny. I'm gonna stay fly. <laughs> you already know that I ain't wearing nothing else. But you know what? Even in the snoop, sneaker business, right, bro? I done spent so much money trying. I even I, we got to be like the Chinese, right? The Chinese will, uh, uh, will give you an order, make you pay for it up front, and then send you the wrong size. You can't do nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do nothing about it, dog. Like you just like okay, whenever I had to change the sizes on that. But but what I I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing next. Oh, you got um, the sports uh, talk radio show. Yes, yeah, yeah, that it's called the truth. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just about being able to give that entertainment. I'm growing. I don't want to go. To ESPN and then I want I wanted to do this, learn it, and get better because I, I I want I want to be in the sports because people don't realize sports it will save my life. Absolutely. Right. So basketball really took me to a whole nother level. So being able to do this in Louisville, I mean, oh, I gotta show y'all this. I got more product. Pete got me. more stuff no, in his no, bag. No, but this is good. Let me tell y'all something. This is good. And for everybody listening, Pete just pulled up on us this morning. We, yeah, we I, got I, here this I morning. Pete said, "People in the lobby." Pete said, yeah. "I got things to talk about okay, this morning." Butter? Man, let me tell you something. Put this on for your pain. You see what that's called? Oh, CBD oil. P Pro Max. P Pro Max. You rub that on, you got any aches and pains? <laughs> I'm taking it away. For real. <laughs> I'm taking it away. I got product. Product out of town. And that's what it is because think about it, right? When you look at these Fortune 500 companies, right? We make up a tenth of 1%. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about CEOs of these Fortune 500 companies. And we spend trillions of dollars as African Americans. Mm -hmm. Why we don't own nothing or control anything? Uh, also, when you go to Shopify, you go to Shopify. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the, I, I got a new company. It's called Lunch Court, mm -hmm. and so now that's what I'm saying. Shopify is a 63 million dollar, 63 billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. We got to start thinking, building things to compete, and 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 be able to grow things and give our people opportunity. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm like constantly thinking and because we can't take none of this with us right. we can't take when you die they ain't gonna and, and, you know this is a sad thing about it too y'all when we do die they're gonna talk about how great we was of course but while we here think about it no if, if biggie and tupac was here man they'll be going through so much right now yeah. but but it's like even nipsey all the stuff nipsey did all of a sudden he went platinum when he died yeah. right? we gotta stop wait i'll be honest with you for me i ain't gonna let him look at my face Mm -hmm. They might as well cremate me. I don't want no fakers looking in my face talking about they miss me and all that. Like, I don't want it. Even everybody that died that's in the entertainment business this world right now, look at it. We didn't appreciate the people why they was here. That's right. You, you know, and we got to start appreciating each other why we're here. And I, and I think that's basically what it is. The journey is going to I love the journey. I love the process. I love creating things. And I love my people. And so if I can educate my people, I, I'm tired of this we just gonna entertain our people Let's educate our people Because the Bible say Pray for wisdom right. Master P uh, Ladies and gentlemen P we appreciate you For pulling up Yes sir It's the Breakfast Club Good morning It's time for Donkey of the Day Donkey of the Day Ask Charlemagne I'm a Democrat So being Donkey of the Day Is a little bit of a mixed up So like a donkey Yee haw okay. Donkey of the Day <laughs> The Breakfast Club Bitches now, I've been called a lot in my 23 years, but Donkey of the Day is a new one. Donkey of the Day goes to a young lady named Madison Marie Russo. Uh, she's 19 years old. She hails from Iowa, and she is the reason that when people send me GoFundMe's, my first reaction is go F yourself. Okay, you know why? Because in this Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, GoFundMe era, people be constantly asking for things. And they be asking for things that some of us used to have to work to get. For example, you don't need a GoFundMe because you need 10 on your windows. Okay? 
All right. Thank you, Sam. All right. You don't you don't need me to cash app you because you want to go to Miami for the weekend. All right. I used to get those kind of requests often, but I think folks realize that's not the way to get money out of people. The way to get money out of people is to have a story and not just any story, a story that pulls at people's heartstrings. OK, you got to have a sob story. I'm talking Cleo right before she accepted that she was about to go out in the blaze of glory and set it off. I'm talking Ricky getting shot in the back and boys in the hood. I'm talking when Charlotte and Charlotte's web dies because she has reached the end of her lifespan. Sidebar. Uh, Wilbur is the reason Charlotte died. All right. She, she doing all that damn graffiti with her, her web, writing out full messages to show how special Wilbur was when the reality is his fate was to be bacon. Okay. War we'll poor Charlotte out physically and emotionally. Charlotte sacrificed her own well-being for Wilbur. Drop on the clues bombs for Charlotte from Charlotte's web. What a selfless spider she was. Okay. But your story to receive money from complete strangers has to be that sad, which actually means it has to be that good. And this woman, Madison from Iowa, oh, she's one of those people who had a really good sad story. See, this woman was able to raise $37,000 from donors. $37,000. 37 racks. How was she able to get this money? Let's go to News 8 for the report, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Maddie Russo, and this is my story. A LinkedIn video of 19-year-old Maddie Russo explaining her supposed cancer diagnosis. She claims she was diagnosed with stage 2 pancreatic cancer, acute mm. lymphoblastic leukemia, and told there was a football-sized tumor wrapped around her spine. Since then, Russo has talked about going through cancer with the National Pancreas Foundation in Chicago. She's also been on a podcast for Project Purple Online, a group on a mission to find a cure for pancreatic cancer. Her stories mm. on both platforms have since been removed. A GoFundMe fundraiser was started titled Maddie's Fight Against Pancreatic Cancer. Tom Buland was listed as who started the donation page. As you can see, it raised nearly $38,000 from more than 400 donors. By Tuesday, the GoFundMe page was taken down. GoFundMe releasing a statement Tuesday saying they have a zero tolerance policy for misuse of our platform and the group is guaranteeing mm. a full mm. refund mm. to donors. I really don't understand people like her. Wow. <laughs> I really don't. If you could take the time and energy to create this elaborate false story about having a stage two cancer diagnosis mm. with a tumor, then guess what? You can write a script. Okay, you can write a novel. All right, how about write about your dark side instead of leaning into it? Because what happens in these situations is you make it bad for the person who's really dealing with cancer and who would, and who would love to have $37,000 to deal with their medical bills. But because of you, folks like you, okay, folks like me will come across these requests and deny them simply because I don't believe you, you need more people. All right, this woman had a fake stash of medical supplies. You know what I mean? Yeah. And wigs in her apartment. <laughs> Girl, you could have been throwing place. Okay, you could be the next Tyler Perry, the next Jordan Cooper, the next August Wilson, but instead of being America's next top playwright, you decided to compete in America's Got Scammers. I don't feel sorry for you, man. Okay, I just hate to waste the talent because anyone who can come up with lavish, successful schemes like this can use that same time and energy figuring out a way to make some money legally, okay? Also, I was born in the 1900s. Okay, your old Uncle Charlotte and took a few laps around the sun, and I'm from the era where certain things I just wasn't pretending to be. Because I didn't want to actually be. That's how it was. I didn't want to park in the handicap spot just because I had the handicap decal. Okay, I wasn't parking that, parking in the handicap spot, getting out limping. Because I was taught you play like that, you may end up handicapped for real. Faking sick? No, sir. Not me. Hell, I tell my kids that now. Don't play about stuff like that, okay? If something is really wrong, by all means, let me know. But don't pretend because you really might end up that way. Madison, 19 years old from Iowa, clearly got none of those lessons in life. And now she's facing 10 years in prison because she wants to lie. And I hope maybe she get at least six months. Six months so she can just be in there with some, some tough women. You know what I mean? <laughs> some, some, some boxer briefs. Some, some tough yeah. women that will sleep in boxer briefs. Okay? <laughs> Please give Madison Marie Russo the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. You are the donkey mm. of the day. Oh, yeah. You are the donkey mm. of the day. Yeehaw. At least six months. For a scam that elaborate, you know what I mean, making light of something that has taken so many people's lives, at least a little six months okay. in a prison, you know what I mean? All right. Just let us all let a room with some tough women that wear boxer briefs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. That'll scare us great. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. What's, mm -hmm. what's the background? You want to play a game? <laughs>
<sighs> okay, okay. I guess it's time to play a game of Guess What Ratio. Yes. All right. Madison Marie Russo, 19 years old of Iowa, did a scam where she said she had stage 2 cancer and a big-ass tumor. She got $37,000 from donors. Guess What Ratio. is. Yes. Yes. Leaks? Completely white. <laughs> Why completely white? Not even off white, just completely white. Why completely Not white? Not even beige. Completely white. Damn. Uh, DJ Envy. Yes. Madison Marie Rosso, 19 years old from Iowa, uh, scammed 37 racks out of people by lying about having stage 2 cancer diagnosis and a tumor. Guess, Guess what? Race she is. White. Damn. <laughs> I'm with you. Black people ain't gonna pay with ailments. Like they ain't gonna say they no, sick not, when they're no, not sick. No, no, and then no. I don't think people gonna give black people yeah, money like that. About bad love. That's right. That's we think about bad love. Yeah, yeah, bad you just life. had a whole conversation yeah. about how certain black people don't want to go to the doctor. Yeah. So I ain't about to play about nah, being I'm not sick. Playing about that. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, both of you are absolutely correct. Yes. Madison Marie Russo is completely white. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 what do I need a cash app? <laughs> <laughs> completely white. The Breakfast Club. And there was just something about his charisma and his mm -hmm. energy. He like whatever he said he wanted to do in his life thus far, he had gotten it. So I was like, oh, this this could be something. Did oh, you know she was, was the one? He was the first time you met her. So. Nah, actually, yeah, whoa, I didn't. Whoa, Damn it, man! Whoa, whoa, listen, whoa, listen, whoa you brave man! <laughs> right, brave whoa. guy. Could have just said no. Wow, it was my girl. Damn it, man! Y'all gonna hit me with the Kevin Hart? I didn't, I didn't say no like that. Like, damn, no. We talk on our podcast, and we said in the book, like she told me she loved me after two weeks, and I was like. Ugh. Thanks. Yeah, that can like, be a bit much. I didn't off? know. Nah, could have been a turn off. It could have been. I yeah. was eighteen, so you um, didn't say it back. And nah, I said thanks. thanks. And the reason why I said Damn. thanks, <laughs> Damn. See, then. and I still came back for more after the <laughs> thanks, right? So who's the crazy one? So, wow. but here's the thing, though. I said thanks because I was like, I don't want to lead her on. Am I going to be a liar and be like, I love you, and right. then not know if we're going to be together? So I was like, I didn't know what to say. So I said thanks. Mm -hmm. It makes me think, like, can you have a future someone if you can't see a future with someone? Like, you saw the future with him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. And and it's funny. It's just the vibe, I think, that we had from early. It mm -hmm. was just talking about hopes and dreams. And he always spoke like a guy that was just far beyond his years. Mm -hmm. Like, even with plans for what he wanted to do financially with his life and his future. And he knew that he didn't want to play football long term. He wanted to eventually be an actor. So I'm like, well, how are you going to do that? He's like, I'm going to ride out on the scholarship. I'm going to see if I mm -hmm. could make the NFL. If I'm at least on the practice squad, I can make a little money to build a little nest egg, move back to Brooklyn, get a mm -hmm. roundstone, renovate it. We live on the bottom floor. I'm like, we had a whole thing planned that out. That was the first date. We talked yeah. about that on our first, first date. date. Wow. First date. And when I think like, about it now, 18-year-old kids don't speak about building their life like that. Mm -hmm. But when I remember, I was like, think I was thinking like that at 18. So. Yeah. Like, Did you ever think because he played football, he was an athlete, like, oh, he's going to be one of those? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And people warned me, too. They were like, oh, like, don't even get too involved, especially once time came for the NFL and he was a prospect. Yeah. They were like, this is the part where you guys go your separate ways. Let him sow his wild oats. You focus on what you got to focus on. Mm -hmm. And if you make it out on top after he's out there with these NFL groupies, then maybe things will work out. You know, and it went both so. ways. They told me when I went to go play football, she wasn't going to wait for me. Mm -hmm. She was still in school. She was getting her master's degree. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, you think while you playing ball, she going to be sitting back at Hofstra just waiting for you to come back? And there was parts of me I was like, dang, that's a tall tax. And it made me insecure. Like, there's a story we talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. When we couldn't find her for a day, she was uh, coming back from tracks in Brooklyn. Yeah, it was like a little mm -hmm. lounge I used to go to every mm -hmm. Thursday with my homegirls. And, and she ran into her uncle on the way back. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you're not driving back to Long Island. You're going to come stay when, you know, you were drinking or whatever. And he was, she's like, I wasn't drinking. I was going to meal. So he went to stay. She went to stay with her aunt and uncle, fell asleep, left her car, her phone in the car. She always calls me when she gets back. Mm -mm. So now I'm in the locker room. I'm getting ready for team meetings, and I don't get no phone call. I don't get no phone call. Can't I'm, concentrate. Can't at all. Oh, right? Can't I wish women understood that. What? Um, I'm I really rookie. don't wish you understand how that makes us feel. What? No, when you talk I about know. it, bro, because I used to tell her all the time, to like, how day. do you not call me when you get places? To this day. Word up. So now I'm in the locker room, NFL rookie. I didn't even get to practice. I didn't get to practice because after that, her mom called me. Said, hey, we haven't heard from... No! Oh, now you cry. So, you cry. Oh, I... <laughs> you cry. What? Yo, it's nasty snot. Bro. <laughs> Somebody got my girl, man. Like, I'm crying, bawling. Then my mom calls me. Um, Deval, I think you should come home. So oh, now man. I'm thinking... No, don't play with they me. They found her. <laughs> And they don't want to tell, tell me you. because I'm by myself in Detroit. Oh. So I go to the security office, the NFL You in security. Detroit? 
I'm in Detroit. In Detroit. Oh. I go to my end the NFL security's office. I'm like, yo, um, they can't find my girlfriend, and they've been having issues with people. Breaking in people's house, mm-hmm. taking people's oh, family man. members. This happens in the league a lot. Mm-hmm. Taking for ransom, all that. Yeah. So they're like, all right, you know, we're going to get our people involved. They call the FBI. They broke into her phone. Mm-hmm. They call campus security, broke into everything. Text like, messages, text everything. Text messages, everything, right? They're like, we have nothing. We found nothing. Like, we don't know where she is. How, what, what, give me the time span. How long? What's that matter of hours? This was, you I want to say I dropped her. My friend, the, the, another thing that is important to mention oh. this guy parked me in to my parking Double spot and wouldn't in. let me out the spot unless I gave him my number. That's the last what? conversation she yeah. had. we had on the phone. He just like was, was like, no, I need your number. And I'm like, I'm really trying to get out this parking spot. So he was trying oh. to bully me to get my number and I told him that what was happening. So yeah. he thought for sure homeboy followed God. me. Yeah. And I wasn't even thinking to put two and two together. So it was about maybe 2 a.m. that I about dropped. About 2 a.m. you yeah. dropped. And, I, and literally as I turned the block, I pull up and my uncle looks and he's like, hey, and I was like, yeah. And Uncle Emil, big time protected. Like, you're not yeah. driving he back was like, you about to drive to Long Island. You in Brooklyn. Which is like, smart. Which, is the, yeah. which, which I get. Yeah. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. So how long were you missing? So then I was missing for about eight, eight hours. hours. You so you slept from 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then she got to her phone. It was just like, yo, what's going on with my yeah, phone? Yeah, I woke up. I'm like, oh my God, where's my phone? I get to the car Bruh. and I was like, oh, it's dead. The minute Bruh. I turned the phone on, it's like 48 text messages, 30 something voicemails. My mom is in tears. She was like, don't you ever do that again. Deval was on his way home. I'm like, what? Then I heard that part and I was so embarrassed. That's why I didn't even make it to practice. The lines got me in the flight. Oh my god! I'm in. I'm on my way to the airport. My phone rings. And at first, when I was calling her, it went dead. Now I'm like, they got her phone. They turned it off. They sending me the voicemail. Then I see a phone call from the boss. I got her and there's the boss, and I'm like. Now they about to ask me for some money. Whoever this is about to ask me for some money. So when I pick up the phone, she's like, like, yo, what up? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, who this? She's like, hey, babe. Hey, babe. So, yeah. so show me, show me. I tell you everything I went through, right? You would think my wife learned, right? Again? No. What, what happened this Deval. past weekend? It wasn't that bad. Again? It wasn't that bad. She went to get, a, peeve too, bro. She went to get a massage, right? And she texts me, hey, babe, I'm here. I'll be on my way home. I'll be home at six, mm. right? It's 545. I'm thinking she got to be on her way home. Of course. I'm calling like 10 minutes straight. Now I'm in the car, I'm about to pull out, I get phone call. Hey babe. I'm like, <laughs> bro. I'm like, you get like 360 on your phone. I have that. I have that. I have it on which, all which, my kids' phone. Wait, I know my called? wife is all life the time. 360. I got life that. 360. Right. Life 360. You know what's so kids crazy? What, yeah. what pisses you off the most is how nonchalant they act. Like it's nothing, like right? It's nothing. <laughs> all right, let's she gonna tell me. She gonna tell me. It's not that big deal. Relax. I was just on the massage table. No, <laughs> man. I don't know why our minds work like that, but we think the worst, worst. possible scenario. So what was that argument like after that? Because now you, you you just can't let her live. Because it's the second time. You gotta so. give her grace. You talk about in the new yeah. book how yeah. you have to give your your, your partner grace. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the big thing. For the us. biggest thing for us is learning how to communicate. You know, we came mm-hmm. from different communication styles. Oh yeah. You know, like I grew completely up, polar opposite. I grew up an athlete. Nothing was ever good enough for my parents. Mm-hmm. Like they were always being on, hard on me like that. Then my football coaches extremely hard on me, but that made me successful. So I felt like, hmm, if you love someone and you want them to be successful, you should be hard on them. So I used to be hard on my girlfriend. If I saw that she wanted to do something the same way she, she was like, how we gonna do that? Mm-hmm. She said she wanted to do TV. How we gonna do it? I'm on her. Oh, TV, they weigh 120 pounds. You need to be in the gym. What are your grades like? You said you wanted to do this. You need to, re- to record more content. And she'd be like, bro. I thought I was doing the right thing. And after five years of marriage, that's when I kind of realized. Yeah, he was like, taking the football approach. He thought I was. I was like, I'm a teammate, yes, mm-hmm. but I'm not like yeah. a teammate on the football field. So coming from a background where my family rarely like had extensive conversations about anything, it was more so if something happened, you didn't feel so good about it, you feel a way, it'll blow over. Let's mm-hmm. just sweep it under the rug. Yeah, yeah. So attacking things head on, communicating about problems, mm-hmm. talking about how you felt. Like there was a huge learning curve for me yeah. with just figuring out how to. Both of us. Just eloquently even expressed or formulate in my mind how to tell him how I felt about it. So people see us now and they're like, man, I want to find me a DeVal. I want to find me a Kadeen. So we're like, well, <laughs> DeVal and Kadeen you see today is not the DeVal Hell and Kadeen no. that like, first met each other. Mm-hmm. This is 20 years in the making. Mm. All right, we have more with Kadeen and DeVal Ellis. When we come back, their book, We Over Me, is out today. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We're still kicking it with Kadeen and DeVal Ellis. Charlamagne? You know, in the book, y'all talk about uh, friendship and how friendship is the core of the relationship which I agree with too but some people mm. would say a uh, love should be the core of uh, a relationship over friendship what would y'all say to that? I would say this more friendships last than intimate partners people have boyfriends and girlfriends in and out of their entire life but some people have friends their whole life and those friends are allowed grace right you have friends that may do something to you like that's my homeboy we'll, we'll figure it out but a lot of times when there's love it's like you hurt me mm. and when you hurt me I can't take I, I can't 
you know, rekindle that hurt. This is what we've learned over the past couple years. I no longer try to validate my actions by dismissing the way she feels about it. Mm. You know, and and I think a lot of times in intimate relationships, not in not in friendships, people do that. If your friend is hurt by something, a lot of times as your friend, you'll be like, oh, my bad, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But then when your girl does something or your girl's feelings are hurt, it's like, well, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I did it like this and you shouldn't be hurt. You can't tell people not to be hurt by something you did. They didn't ask mm -hmm. to be hurt. They hurt. That's right. So what we've learned how to do is just accept the other's feelings. You feel that way. I'm going to explain to you why I did it. I didn't mean to hurt you, but I accept the fact that you feel that way. And it's not just a, for a man to do to a woman. I be wanting my feelings to be validated that's too. It. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? Like that's and that's the manliest thing I can say about it. Mm -hmm. When my wife started to validate my feelings and say she understands how I feel, she didn't always agree, but she understood. I said, at least if you can understand, we can move forward. And that's mm -hmm. that's why I feel like friendship to me is the foundation because you have friends for life. Now let me ask you, you know, what do you think about that, Kadeem? No, I think um, he's spot on with that. And it's funny for a while with Deval, I would encourage him to speak his mind. And say how he felt, and then at the same time be like, "Man, you bitching and moaning every day about something like, <laughs> Yo, like right. that's what you were saying." Literally, <laughs> I was like, "Since when did feeling sharing no, become him, bitching and moaning?" Tell him what you said. We were having a discussion, right? And this is for the first time in my life. I was just like, "Well, I'm gonna be honest. This is how I felt. And it hurt my feelings, and I'm going through why I hurt my feelings." She goes, "You sound like a bitch. Wow. <laughs> damn it, man." Right? Oh, boy. Oh, that How do you respond? <laughs> so me being a very immature person that I am, I said, I don't got to sound like a bitch, but I can go get me another bitch. Because now I'm trying to hurt her. See, now, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then it becomes that. I get the tip for that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's immature. Yeah. Like, yeah, we were all. like 26, we 26, 27. Yeah. We were yeah. immature. But, and we tell these stories in the book because we like to tell people the stories through, through the trauma. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it seem like everything was picture perfect. Right. Yeah. Because when people fall into a, a situation in their relationship where they're hurting each other, they feel like, I'm the only relationship going through this. And since I'm the only relationship going through this, I'm going to get out of here. Mm -hmm. But nah, we was just like, listen, that hurt my feelings. That hurt my feelings. I don't mean to do that. I didn't mean to say that. How can we get back to what we want to do? Yeah. And we spoke we, about we it. Try to, I try to encourage it now, too, because I mean, so, so often women are trying to pull at their men to mm -hmm. tell them, how do you feel? What do you need? What do you want? And the fact that I have a husband who I think is sometimes even an overshare. Like mm -hmm. sometimes we just mm -hmm. talk, like for us, marriage seems to be one continued long conversation. Like mm -hmm. it just never ends. Like it's we're real. always talking about something. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that's been our saving grace for us. It's like just being upfront about how we feel off the bat. So there's no guessing involved. Now he's acting now. Mm -hmm. Well, he's mm -hmm. been acting for a long time now. Yeah. So did you ever have a problem with him lip locking with other? <laughs> <laughs> I low key like this. I'd be like, really? Oh, look at you. <laughs> you're, a, you're, a, you're a cucker? <laughs> well, let me tell you. What do they call them? What do people call them? Cuck queen. Cuck queen. Cuck queen. Cuck queen. Oh, Cuck queen. Love I love that. Mm -hmm. Now we're extending my porn vocabulary. But anyway, <laughs> uh, no, I actually, I think because I understand the industry and I realize like these sex scenes ain't really nothing super sexy about it. I'm and thinking not, about bro. the environment that he's in when they're actually filming that. Right, right. Um, but a funny story, two years ago, actually almost rolled yeah, up two on two years, ago, years yeah. he was filming an episode of Sisters or a season of Sisters. Mm -hmm. So I'm simultaneously watching the episodes that are on air and he warns me that he has this shower scene coming up with his co-star crystal so i was like okay all right and he was just like just so you know like it's, it's gonna be a little intense and i'm like mm -hmm. how intense can it be for bt <laughs> like yeah, that's bt so the episode comes on and i see the Val got crystal like legs over his shoulder she's up against the shower wall it's a blue light and i'm in, and it's just going and it's going and i'm like Oh, that's what we doing, right? So I'm like, <laughs> when somebody what say doing. that's what we doing, that's, that's what it's what never good. Doing, right? <laughs> that's what we doing? Okay, cool. Yeah. So what I did, I go on Amazon and I was like, blue light bulb. <laughs> so I ordered me a blue light bulb. The blue light bulb and the lamp came to the door. I screwed that joint in. He came home one day before Valentine's Surprised Day. Him. And I was like, oh, you here? I went, put that thing together. Put the blue light on. We only had an air mattress in the bedroom yeah. at this point. And let me tell you, got to work and our son Dakota, our <laughs> hey, son, hey, is yeah. the product of the blue light the blue special, light, the blue light which special. is which is kind of weird because it was inspired from a scene between him and Crystal's his godmother actually, yeah. and he's you know born months later. So I can't tell yeah. him that story. I don't think I'll save the yeah, details. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell Dakota. I can't that story. tell him like, oh, you were well, conceived well, off the blue light special. He'll, he'll hear this later. I'm sure on, he'll hear one. Yeah. He's documented now. <laughs> but but I, I will say this though, I'm very deliberate about making sure that she is in contact with the women that I have these scenes with. So for example, when we did our chemistry read, me and Crystal, 
Crystal FaceTimed her, I let her know beforehand, like, you know, we have some sex scenes. To me, I don't want it to ever be a thing where she feels uncomfortable. You mm -hmm. go to a red carpet or you go to an event and that's the woman that I had a sex scene with and it's the first time you ever meet her. It's like, nah, y'all have this conversation that's beforehand. Real. I'm always respectful, especially to my co-stars. Like, I'm never going to cross that line because... Mm -hmm. After the whole Me Too movement, you realize how easy it is for someone to feel uncomfortable in your presence. Have you ever felt uncomfortable in the workplace? I've never felt uncomfortable, to be honest. And I'm not going to out anybody, but women are very sexual Aggressive. too in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, they say stuff. They, you know, woman may smack you on the butt if, you know what I'm saying, if they think it's just that type of environment. And you may feel comfortable as a man saying, oh, if that's what we doing... That's what we doing. But what I equate it to, which may not be right, is kind of like I can make a joke on a white boy. If he make a joke on me about my blackness, I'm going to be pissed. Right. If a woman says something to me about my physique, I'm going to eat that. I'm not going to now just comment about her body every time it. I see her. You don't know. That sounds Whoa. crazy. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Whoa, where you go up? Where you go up, bro? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question. Right. So, yeah. so people got on me about a couple of weeks ago because huh? my wife went on a, a, a 20 day trip. Yeah, I seen oh, that. Yeah, I and they were you, like, yeah. how dare you? How you let her go on a I trip? Would you let your wife go on a 20 day trip? So here's here's my thing. Uh -oh. right? I don't know how she would survive without me and the kids for 20 <laughs> days. <laughs> That's and she would spend the whole time calling me and to FaceTime, FaceTime the kids and it would oh, annoy yeah, the shit yeah. out of me. Yeah. Right? Word. Me, I don't know how I would survive without my wife for 20 days. That's how I feel. Like, Word. if Kay <laughs> tells me she wants to do something, I'm going to be 100% behind it. But I'm it was not, also a challenge to me. Six kids. No wife. Oh, so, I mean, I mean, you could do that, bro. Oh yeah, you, I you, did six no kids, You could do that Yo, no, easy. The, the math homework was hard. I ain't even gonna front. <laughs> oh, I'm not touching Third, we math, don't even homework. Do math homework. homework. I got we a hired math tutor. a tutor. I got a tutor for Jackson for my son. and what? Third grade. Third grade, because that's grade. when the, the, the common math started the coming in. The regroup and the common yeah. core, yeah. bro. I'm bro, like, what happened to me, Karen? Yo, on everything. Me and Jackson almost came to blows because I was trying to tell him old school carry the one, and he's like, no, you gotta make it go to ten, and I'm like, what the fuck? I got to go to ten. I've been I've been doing math my whole life. You put the put the one on top of that cross the eight on it and he was just like no I said you gonna tell me no I'm your father I don't care what your teacher say who so, was right <laughs> he was right he was right <laughs> it's new math it's new it's math, literally man. New math. you gotta yes. make all of the equations go to 10 for some no reason sense. yes and then it comes back a roundabout mm -hmm. answer when you could have easily did it in three seconds and yeah. I said I am it's not having a stroke trying to figure this out with my eight year old nope. yeah I've been getting that assignment to my wife they got bad grades and then they come home like dad did my homework it's bad so we had Lala up here guest hosting and I seen that I did mind. see her, yeah. yeah. She, oh, she, came, she, did she came to mind because oh, I, I right, heard right. Her, her clip on um, people not wanting to be married now or aspiring exactly. to marry. Yeah. Yeah. What do y'all think of that? She said marriage is not the goal no different. More. I mean, I guess it's a case by case basis, but it doesn't. it's not something that's highlighted as the best thing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I think Deval and I, much like many other couples, because quiet as it's kept, we're not an anomaly. Like, there are a lot of, like, yes. you're a happily married man, happily mm -hmm. married man. There are a lot yes. of happily married people mm -hmm. running around. So I just feel like by us sharing more of those stories, it's a way to kind of help the narrative around marriage, but also, too, like I said earlier, making sure people know, like, do I aspire to marriage, right? You can't find somebody and be like, oh, well, this person makes me want to be married. Because what happens? That puts the onus on that person to always Correct. be this perfect image of what you were, what they yeah. were when they met you, or, you mm -hmm. know, and that that's so much pressure on one person. So what if they falter? What if they change? Mm -hmm. What if they outgrow something? Then no, are you still a marriage person or not, you know? So I think you really need to decide, like, is that something you aspire to first? And then go from there. All right, we have more with Kadeen and Deval Ellis. When we come back, their book, We Over Me, is out today. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. NV, Charlemagne the God, Ray J, our co-host. We're still kicking it with Kadeen and Deval Ellis. Charlemagne? Y'all have a chapter <laughs> called uh, There's a Marriage After This Wedding. Break that down. So while we were writing the book, we had discussed what our thought process was about getting engaged and being married. Mm -hmm. And Kadeen had admitted that she had never really thought about the marriage. Nope. Anytime I, mind, had, yeah, that, anytime I had conversations with anyone regarding marriage or the wedding, it was the wedding. It was, mm -hmm. you know, what dresses are you going to get and, what, and who's the florist? And it was the planning of the day. Mm -hmm. At no point in time did anyone pull me aside and say, Kadeen, like, once you get married, yeah. here are some things to expect, right? You watch these Disney movies and it says happily ever after. No one sees what happens after yeah, yeah, they yeah, ride yeah. off into the sunset. Correct. So I felt like I was left in the dark. 
I feel like it was a setup. I felt like nobody prepped me on anything. And then I think there was also a beauty in that, though, because I felt like if I were to get advice from aunts, uncles, or grandmothers, it might have also been their jaded perspective of what their marriage was Correct. like. And I'm like, that could have been a turn off, too. I agree but it was that. particularly difficult because I just did not think about or plan for what life was going to look like after the wedding. Mm-hmm. So the pressure comment had triggered a lot of women because they felt like, oh, so she pressured you to get married. And I was like, it wasn't the pressure to get married. It was the pressure to take care of all of the responsibilities once you decide you're going to marry a woman. For example, I have to save the money to get you a ring. I have to decide how we're going to propose. I have to decide after we get married, what is our life going to look like? If we have financial issues, no one ever says, what's your wife doing? They always look at me as a husband and be like, so there was a lot of pressure on me to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to be the husband that I want to be. On top of that, once I proposed, I got cut (laughs) six weeks after by the NFL, so I didn't have a job. (laughs) <laughs> so there was a lot of pressure on me because I'm like, hey, I was I was in the NFL when I proposed and now we're planning a wedding and I'm no longer in the NFL. How do I sustain the lifestyle of someone who was making a half a million dollars a year when I make no money? So, yeah, there was a lot of pressure on me, but I, I understand how a lot of women could have taken that word pressure and felt triggered by it. But to me, I'm mm. like, as the man, I didn't care about the wedding at all. I didn't. I was focused on the marriage. I said, OK. After you get married, where are we gonna live? What are you gonna do for work? What am I gonna do for work? Are we gonna have children that's right away? That's how most men feel. Because I, I look at it the same way. Like we spend all this money for this. Yeah. Right. F that. Let's do the future. Let's do the house. Let's do the savings. Let's I do the no, investments. No, no, Let's do this. No foresight. Because that's just for the show, bro. You know, Jason foresight. Wilson was up here the other day, and Jason Wilson said, "It's my guy too." Let's get. He said, "Me and my wife got it together, together." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So on that come up, you know what I'm saying? Like we worry about things that it's what you got a partner yeah. for. She gonna be with you if she a real one. Absolutely. That's a fact. I mean think about it after the whole wedding situation happened and then we went back you know the, the w- wedding was over you know it's fend for yourself at this point Yo. DeVal looked at me he said you know I don't want to go to Canada because he had an opportunity to play ball in Canada he said yo I want to start a business and maybe work towards this acting career and I was like alright well Yo, so what on, we gotta no, do on everything we had a house in Michigan it was on an acre it was on an acre four bedrooms five bathrooms living room dining room everything now we're back in an apartment in Crown Heights and she's on the bus. When I tell you my ego was freaking crushed, I'm like, I'm, I used to sit in the bathroom sometimes. I go in the bathroom, I'm going to the bathroom, babe. I be on the <laughs> toilet just sitting there just like, man, like how did I end up back here and I got this woman that I asked to be my wife and now she got to go to the mall and work. Like, imagine you tell a woman, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. I don't want to play football no more. I don't know how I'm going to be an actor, but I'm going to be an actor. Matter of fact, I'm going to open a gym. I don't have no experience in kinesiology, but you tell your woman this, and she goes, okay, how are we going to do that? You, you don't got to tell me to imagine. <laughs> you yeah, 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 we did it. We over me. That's Word it. Up. We've been through it. You see, and, and I know y'all both Literally. been through it, so when you when you hear, like, when people say, well, you know, why you love marriage so much, that's why. I got yeah. a partner, bro. When, when it was the worst of the worst, I could lean over like and you be said. like, that's real. baby, It's the let's... homie right here. Well, how many days did we eat <laughs> grits? <laughs> Yo, this is after the NFL. Grits. grits and eggs. That might be why that's Jackson. Our oldest son loves grits and eggs. Grits and like eggs. that's his thing. It was cheap. And it might be because I made that's it three what we times made a day. <laughs> Forever. I, I was not trying to go buy no steaks. Right. You hungry, buddy? Well, you want breakfast? You want breakfast for dinner, right? The breakfast breakfast for dinner. That's the best <laughs> thing right? breakfast. breakfast. Grits and eggs every day. Can we give some of these books mm-hmm. away? We, we got two up here. Can Please we give two? Do. Away? I would absolutely, love absolutely. If y'all did. Nah, we over, we over me, man. That's right. 800 585 1051. We got two books to give away. We, no, we, we keep it all for books you brought up here, so we can give two away. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Right, yeah. So we're going to yeah. give two books away today. Call us up right now and pick up the book. We over me, and we appreciate you for joining us, guys. Nah, thank, thank you, y'all, man. We appreciate y'all. Subscribe to the Dead Ass Podcast. Yes, we're on Patreon. You can watch all the video content on Patreon. Yeah, so. we got some live shows coming up. Detroit, we still got tickets if y'all out there. Come, yeah, come what up, Detroit? Where do you get tickets from? Deadasspodcast.com. Go to deadasspodcast.com. You can That's get you know, the it. last few tickets in Detroit. Everywhere else is sold out. LA is sold out. Texas is sold out. Chicago is sold out. Yeah. All of the book tours sold out. Uh, New York, DC. Philly. Philly and Atlanta is all sold out. So yes. we'll see y'all in Detroit, Remember hopefully. Love. And bro, we love y'all. I love sisters, man. But see, <laughs> I watch sisters from the perspective of a comedy. <laughs> Oh, for sure. You have to. Oh, it, it is, is a hilarious. comedy. It's hilarious. It is. Like, it is. This, this, this is not the one where the dude hit the dude and he spun around. Yes, yes. yes. No. Come on, man. So what's <laughs> I get my prostate ticket? <laughs> so, let, me tell you, let me tell you the truth about sisters and what people don't understand. Do y'all watch telenovelas? No. I mean, I, I, know, I know they are, though. Yeah. So telenovelas is a soap oh, opera, but there's comedy, oh, there's really comedy in the soap opera. Yeah. So when people first saw sisters, they were just like, why is this on primetime? 
Tyler put a, a soap opera on primetime and added comedy to it. So it's like a telenovela. That's why the numbers are so crazy, but people who watch it don't understand. They're like, this is funny, but it's not supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a drama. Gotcha. Why do they so, want you to hate Karen so much? I don't know. And it'd be, nah, she mad disrespectful to Fatima. A lot of it is the fact that people love Fatima so much. Mm. Right. And she's the antithesis of what I need in a woman. So they're like, you got to hate her in order mm -hmm. to love her. And I'm like, no, it's a divine dichotomy. I can love both of them at the same time. Okay, divine dichotomy? You know, like, yeah. Look at you with no, the same so, words. But no, divine dichotomy is the fact that two things that are opposite can exist at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. And people often think that they can't. That's right. right. So it's like my ex and my current girl, I have to hate her in order to love my girl properly. No, I don't. I can still have love for her. It just didn't work out for us because we she wasn't my one. Mm. This one is my one. I have love for her, but I am in love with Fatima. Mm -hmm. And that's a great and question because on Twitter, that's what I'm always arguing with people. Why you still talk to Karen? Mm -hmm. Why would I not? Every right. woman deserves respect, especially if she might be carrying my child. Right. Because you if it is your baby, then what? Exactly. You can't you be deadbeat. They're going to get you from the yeah, parent. So that was a deadbeat. This is why Charlemagne got the good job. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That was a good question. Because on Twitter, question. that is always what they ask me. Why you still talk to Karen? I'm oh, like, we have on. a travel show coming out with the boys. Oh, what? no. Go. Oh, yes, on yes, Go yes, USA. Yes, yes. Um, yes. It's coming out actually this Friday, February 10th. So mm -hmm. make sure everybody's going to watch. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good time. We got to take the boys over. Go USA. Hold on. I do have one more question. How do you feel about putting your family out there so much? So as the kids get older, I'm not sure how much more they're going to be out there I'm just being honest you, right yep. we, it got to a point where we asking Jackson like hey do you want to be on camera and Jackson say no the answer is no yeah, cause Cass he's 11 going on has 12 always, now. yeah Cass yeah. has always been no Cairo loves the camera at first this was a way for me to share my life like I'm an artist if I was a rapper I'd be rapping about my family mm -hmm. you know but I'm starting to realize like my kids need to have say and what their likeness is. And just for safety purposes, too. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I'm mama beer mode. So yes. I'm half the time like, nope, leave them out. No, nope. even if people see us in public, for the most part, people are very respectful. They come up and say Absolutely. hi from a distance. But they, they see us with the kids. They kind of know to like, you know, stay back and stuff. So yeah. we have yeah. a good, a good, strong, I, I hate saying fan good. base. But, but supporters, um, supporters, yeah, good yeah. supporters. Yeah, but the, the kids, part. as they get older, especially yeah, going to school, traveling on their own, I'm probably gonna phase them back. I don't want them to have to walk around with security because their parents. You know, like, I just don't want them to have to. I want them to Shoot. live. Some days nice I want to phase life. all the way off of social media mm -hmm. and just shut the whole the whole joint down. Well, she know, never but, wanted to do social media. Yeah. This this is so what's I crazy. Have my but, moments where I like go back and forth about it, just because again, safety, protective safety mama bear, all that. So. We just yeah. try to take the measures necessary when we do involve them. But the travel show was fun because it was something that we got to do. Travel the U.S. a little bit with the guys. And, and we executive produce all our content. That's hey, so that's I'm dope. not that's I'm not it. about letting anybody else have autonomy over my children's likeness or my family's likeness. Yeah, we turned on a so lot of stuff. We did. We turned on a reason. whole lot of stuff. Like reason, yeah. Our manager over there in the corner be looking at us sometimes like, really? Y'all really <laughs> don't want to do that? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to do it if we can't control it. So, um... We just trying to own this as best as we can and just, you know, be we over me till we die. Hey, there we go. There we go. over me. The book is out right now. That's right. Yes. Yes, it's sir. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. E's new show, Celebrity Prank Wars, has host Kevin Hart and Nick Cannon declaring war on Hollywood. Each week, they take you behind the schemes as they team up with their famous friends for a high stakes annex, outrageous stunts, and sweet revenge. The bigger the star, the harder they fall. Catch Celebrity Prank Wars tonight at 10 on E. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here, Charlemagne. You got a positive note? The positive note is simply this. If nothing else, and I want you to remember that this weekend, if nothing else, some people just teach you how not to be. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?